Hello everyone, Darcy here. You may know me from my Instagram page, Darcy Bono Creations. Recently, I was very graciously invited to join the Watch It, Paint It team, and I am super excited to be here. Now, this is my very first appearance on Watch It, Paint It, so do let me know how I'm doing. Give me any feedback you like on how I can improve or make it a more enjoyable experience for you, and I will certainly take it to heart. So, without much further ado, let's get this show on the road. We're going to be painting some ghosts today, and not only are we going to be painting ghosts, these are going to be some very bright, eye-catching ghosts. As you can see, I use this green on all of my night haunts, and it just gives them a really nice, almost phosphorescent glow that really makes them stand out. And the best part is, it's super easy to achieve. So for our brushes, we're going to be using a large layer brush. In this case, I'm using a Winsor Newton size 1, but anything that you would ordinarily use to apply a shade coat will work. And then we're going to be using a large and small dry brush. Now the two pictured here are in fact makeup brushes. The larger one is actually a eyeshadow brush, while the smaller is a concealer brush. And you can get these at basically any retailer that sells cosmetics for anywhere from a dollar to three dollars. It's very inexpensive. And the reason I use these rather than the traditional flat chisel tip dry brush is because they have softer bristles and a rounded shape. And this just gives you a much smoother color transition, as well as reducing the kind of chalkiness you sometimes get from dry brushing. And keep in mind, if you'd rather just stick with your traditional flat dry brush, that is perfectly okay. You'll still be able to achieve the overall effect. As for the colors we're going to be using today, we've got Moot Green, Hex Wraith Flame, Goss Blaster Green, and a flat white. In this case, I'm using Vallejo Game Colors Dead White, but any basic white will work. And finally, we have two optional glazes that we can use to adjust the contrast of our green ghost. The blue glaze we're going to use to deepen the recesses if we find that it's not quite as intense as we'd like it, and the green glaze you can use to kind of dull down any over-highlighted white parts. So for starters, I've primed this model using Army Painter's White, and this way all the subsequent layers of green are going to be very bright. So now that we've got our miniature all primed here, let's get to the first step of the painting process, which is just making a glaze out of moot green and a little bit of water. As you can see, I've just added one drop of water to one drop of moot green and mixed it until it's a somewhat runny but not too watery consistency. You want it relatively opaque when you put it on your model. Unlike shade coats, glazes are meant to sit on top of the model and tint it rather than go entirely in the recesses. Now this will go in the recesses, but you also want it to make the white turn a very bright green like you see here. So all you're going to do is coat all of the ghostly bits in this bright green glaze. And for the sake of your time, I'm going to speed up this process. Once you've entirely coated your miniature and allowed it to dry, it should look something like this. And next we're going to be using Hex Wraith Flame to help cool down this neon green we've created. And just like in the first step, you're just going to be coating the entire model using Hex Wraith Flame. Now you'll notice that this paint is just a little more watery than the previous glaze that you made, so it's going to run into the recesses more. If you notice that it tends to pool, you can always just wipe off your brush, make sure it's nice and dry, and then wipe out some of the recesses if you notice that there's just too much um, in the deeper parts of the model. And once you've completely coated your ghost in Hex Wraith Flame, it'll look something like this. They look relatively radioactive, but we're going to add Goss Blaster Green to help bring a bit of contrast and coolness to these ghosts. Using your large dry brush and starting at the tops or the tips of the ghostly wisps, you're going to work your way down towards the face, lightly dry brushing back and forth just like you normally would with any other dry brush, and you'll right away see that it gives you a great amount of contrast against the deeper, bolder green you created in the previous step. I generally will concentrate the brightest parts of this dry brushing on the tops, the faces, the fingers, and then the sword blades, if there is one on your ghost. I usually will just start at the tip of the sword and work my way down to the um, handle, and that way it gives it more of a realistic, almost a sheen to the blade itself, but still having your ghostly green. And 
And to be perfectly honest, I forgot to take a post picture after finishing this dry brush. So we're gonna jump right into the lighter dry brush using our flat white. This is actually the final step in the process and you're just going to focus this bright white on the very tips and the edges you want most prominent looking. I will usually put this on just the tops like I did in the previous step, the face and the fingers again, but just a little bit lighter touch this time. You don't want it thoroughly coated, so be very selective on where you put it. And if at any point you feel like you've over highlighted, used too much white in a certain area, you can always use the green glaze I mentioned earlier to help tone it back down and reduce the high contrast. And after some light dry brushing, your ghost is now complete. If this looks good enough to you, you can stop here, and I thank you very much for watching. However, if you'd like to add a bit more depth of color to your ghostly green and really make it pop, stick around for the finishing touch. So in order to make the brightest parts pop, we're actually going to be darkening the recessed areas using Gilliman Blue Glaze. All this means is that we're going to apply a very, very thin coat of this glaze to all the deepest recesses on the model. Now, when I say a very thin layer of glaze, I, I mean very thin. When you dip your paintbrush into the glaze, I want you to wipe uh, at least half of it off. You don't want it looking too blue in the recessed areas, otherwise it's gonna really throw off the bright greens. And there we have it. With a little bit of basing, these spirit hosts are ready to terrify the battlefield. So thank you very much for watching. As I said, this is my first video with Watch It Paint It, so feel free to give me any feedback you'd like, and I can't wait to paint for you guys next time. Take care.